Okay, question nine. Factorize fully 12x cubed minus 8xyz. Okay, what we're going to ask ourselves is, what is the highest common factor of the 12 and the 8, first of all? That is, what's the biggest number that divides into 12 and 8? Well, it's 4. Then we've got x cubed and an x, y, z, assuming they're all distinct. What, what if anything, divides into uh, them both? Well, just an x does. And what are we left with in the brackets? Well, what's 12x cubed divided by 4x? It's 3x squared. And what's 8yz divided by 4x? Well, it's equal to 2 y, z, and we were doing a subtract. So the answer is 4x, 3x squared minus 2y, z. Okay, factorise the following. This is a quadratic expression because it has an x squared in it, and it's got a number here. So these are the ones that I'm putting back into brackets. I'm asking myself, what two numbers multiply to 2 and add up to 3? Well, 2 and 1 do, because 2 plus uh, 1 is 3, and 2 times 1 is 2. So this factorises to x plus 1, x plus 2. Simplify the following here. Uh, you'll remember earlier I told you if you had a fraction like 3 times 7 over 3 times 11, you could cancel the 3s, uh, that are multiplying on top and bottom and be left with 7 over 11. Similarly here, this works um, with a bit of ingenuity. You've got an x plus 2 on the top and a 3 multiplied by x plus 2 on the bottom. Really though on top, you've got a 1 multiplied by x plus 2 and on the bottom you have your 3 multiplied by x plus 2. The, there is an x plus 2 multiplying on the top and bottom so they cancel and leave you with a third. OK, factorise fully 10x squared minus 40y squared. Well, what goes into 10 and 40? What's the highest common factor of 10 and 40? Well, 10 is, and you'd be left with in brackets, x squared minus 4y squared. Unfortunately, however, I'm not finished. Um, the following expression in brackets is a difference of two squares, so can be factorised. Remember the difference of two squares says that if I have something that looks like x squared minus a squared, two numbers squared and subtracting, that factorises to x plus the number, x minus the number. So here, I can factorise that further. x squared minus 4y uh, squared, well, that must be x plus 2y, x minus 2y. Because x squares to give you x squared, and 2y squares to give you 4y squared. So this was just spotting a difference of two squares. OK, let's move on to question 10. This says that um, for the Khan family of two adults, and three children, the cost is £69. And that for the Lewis family, three adults and five children are £109. So this uh, question simply boils down to solving two simultaneous equations for A, the cost of an adult, and C, the cost of a child. So start by writing our equations neatly. 2a plus 3c is equal to 69, equation 1, and 3a plus 5c is equal to 109, equation 2. Several ways to solve these, but I like the method of making one of the coefficients of the variables the same. Let's make the coefficient of a the same. 2 and 3 both go into 6, so I could multiply that equation by 3, and that equation by 2, what would I get? Well, I would get everything multiplied by 3. I would get 6a plus 9c is equal to 
69 multiplied by 3 which is 207 and I would get multiplying the second one by 2 I would get 6a plus 10c is equal to 218. Two new equations so let's call them 3 and equation 4. Now imagine I did equation 4 subtract equation 3. 4 subtract 3. I'm doing that because I want to eliminate the a's. The a's are the same, I want to eliminate them. 6a take away 6a is nothing, they're gone as required. 10c take away 9c is 1c and 218 take away 207 is simply 9. I've already found the cost of a child ticket is £9. I'm going to use this fact here and put it into one of the above equations, let's say the first one, to find what A must be now, the only other thing I don't know. So reading out, I could say that 2A plus 3 times 9 is 27 must equal 69. Solve for A by subtracting 27 off both sides, so I get 2A is equal to 42. And then dividing both sides by 2, I would get that A is equal to 21. So I got A, the price of an adult, is £21, and C, the price of a child, is £9. Make it nice and easy for the examiner to see. A is 21, C is 9. Question 11. Um, this is a thirds question and asks you to simplify um, bracket 9 plus root 3 and root 7 multiplied by bracket 9 plus root 7. So this is just simply expanding uh, two brackets with two terms in each. So we're doing 9 plus root 7 multiplied by 9 plus root 7. Well, 9 times 9 is 81. 9 times root 7 is 9 lots of root 7. Root 7 times 9 is again 9 lots of root 7. And root 7 times root 7 is root 49, which is simply 7. Collecting like terms, 81 plus 7 is 88. 9 root 7 plus 9 root 7 is 18 lots of root 7. OK, 11b is slightly tricky. It says prove that the square root of 12 plus 6, all divided by the square root of 3, is identical to 2 multiplied by 1 plus root 3. This type of question is a proof uh, of an identity, uh, so it's a proof question. Best way to do these is maybe start off on the left hand side uh, over here, uh, work with it, use some algebra to show that it equals the right hand side and you're done. So we'll start off with root 12 plus 6 all divided by the square root of 3. Mathematicians hate and do not like thirds on the denominator of a fraction. So they would multiply the top and bottom of the fraction by the square root of 3 to remove this. Then they would get, well, the square root of 3 times 12 is the square root of 36, using the thirds laws. And the square root of 3 times 6 is just simply plus uh, 6 lots of the square root of 3. Root 3 times root 3 is root 9, which is equal to 3. Tidying that up, the square root of 36 is 6, plus 6 root 3 over 3. Now I can divide, um, I factorise the top, let me factorise out the top into 6, 1 plus root 3 over 3. Now I can do the 6 divided by the 3 separately, which is 2, and I'm left with my 1 root 3 on the top. Hence I've got that left hand side equals right hand side, and I'm done. OK, question 12a, solve the inequality. Remember, inequalities are almost exactly like uh, linear equations, apart from when you multiply or divide by negative, but all the same processes generally apply. There's a 3x here and an x here, so I'm going to subtract x off both sides to get 2x plus 7 is bigger than 8. Now I'm going to subtract 7 off both sides 
to get 2x is bigger than 1 and then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get x is bigger than a half and the solution is x bigger than a half or x bigger than 0.5 OK, make A the subject of the formula. A couple of ways to do this. Just firstly, imagine what happened to A. You had A, you added 3 to it to get A plus 3, and then you took square roots to get the square root of A plus 3, and that gave you B, and this was equal to B. So if you were going backwards, the first thing you would do to B is you would square it to get B squared, and then what you would do is to undo the add 3, you would subtract 3 to get b squared minus 3, and that would give you your a back. So I know that a must be equal to b squared minus 3. That's your answer. Doing it a slightly more elegant way, I think that's a bit messy, but doing it a slightly more elegant way, uh, like equations, if I want to get the a from out uh, from with under the square root, I could square both sides of the equation to get a plus 3 is equal to b squared and then I could subtract 3 of both sides of the equation to get a is equal to b squared subtract 3. a is on its own on one side of the equation so a is the subject of the formula and a is b squared subtract 3.